Welcome to Digging Deeper, Make Creativity Your Business Advantage. I'm your host, Jason Falls. Today on the program, it's time to do some spring cleaning with the words we use. Jerry McTeague is here to talk about his new book, Business Blather. He wants us to stop using words that sound good but say nothing. Amen to that. Jerry is a veteran copywriter who, like most of us, probably abhors the word synergy. He's also tired of everything from emails to business websites and sales materials being stuffed like a cat in a sushi bar with words we all have to stop and think about to understand. I'm also a bit nervous. He's going to red ink my show and tell all of you what I'm sure you already know, and that is that I talk too damn much. Uh, but so anyway, he'll be here to, to do all that in just a second. Uh, also, uh, there's a big influencer marketing event going on this week. It's actually going on right now. It started this morning and goes through Thursday. Uh, you can and should register and attend, and don't worry, today's content is available on demand afterwards, but I'm hosting tomorrow's show, so I'd love for you to join me. I'll tell you a lot more about that uh, after we talk to Jerry. Finally, I had a consultant friend ask me for some advice this week about talking to a client about influencer marketing. I'll share his question and my answer, which I think will help some of you combat that resistance from skeptical clients or bosses when arguing for budget or opportunity to leverage influencers for your brand. If you have read my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand, uh, you probably know that I didn't spend a whole lot of time in the book describing a bunch of influence marketing software platforms, but I did mention one more frequently than the others, and that platform is Julius. I've depended on Julius for influencer discovery and campaign management for some time now. When I'm looking for the right influencer for our clients, Julius allows me to search across Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Twitch, Twitter, Pinterest, blogs, and more. When I click into an influencer's profile, I can see their audience demographics, the other networks they have reached through, and quickly scan their recent posts to decide if they're a right influencer for my brand. Uh, all the pieces of campaign management are there too. Julius allows you to reach out, document contracts, share and approve influencer content, and of course, measure the ROI of each campaign, influencer, or post. You owe it to your brand to do a demo of Julius today. Please go to jason.online slash Julius and request one. That's jason.online slash Julius. I've been just in discovering all sorts of fun influencer options on this software, uh, even in the last week, working on it, uh, you know, as we speak, sort of uh, on some campaigns. So love the stuff. You should check it out. Do a demo today. Jason.online slash Julius. One more reminder, folks, if you're dialing into the live broadcast on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter, you can jump in the comment section there and, and hit at reply on the Twitter video to ask questions and interact with us here on the show. Jump in the comments, say hello, and ask your question. I'll do my best to surface it so that we can go along. As usual, uh, our two usual suspects, Izzy House says hello. Chip Griffin says morning. Uh, good morning to you and hello, uh, Izzy. Thank you guys for coming in. So do jump in the comments there, say hello to us on the program. And certainly if you have questions about business blather, which we're going to get into with Jerry here in just a second, uh, I do want you to ask those questions too, because he's here to answer your questions as well. All right. So we're going to hit a couple of buttons here so that I can get ready for things. You know how I am with buttons, right? Before I do that though, let me read you an about us page or at least sec part of the page that I found on a website recently. This is amazing. At the core of our experience is a deep understanding of the technologies, markets, and business characteristics, as well as the management and organizational challenges that companies face when adopting and developing digital and smart systems. We strive to generate deep insight into how emergent technologies and new business models drive value creation and competitive advantage in our clients' businesses. Now, that is uh, actually uh, hysterical in a lot of ways because uh, it is from a real website, a real company. And what's really funny is that last sentence is actually verbatim an example of business blather that Jerry McTeague uses in his new book. And that tells you, and, and in his book, he says, Google it because it's used verbatim by companies all over the web. And there it is. Jerry, you either found a golden example of craptastic jargon to hammer with your expertise or it's licensed copy you get a kickback on. Which is it? I don't know, but I'll tell you, I, I, um, I'm just amazed at how much money companies spend today and, and throw it down the drain because they think, and the tragedy is they think they're communicating with their audience by using pretentious language and acronyms and bewildering jargon, but people are mystified. The thing you just read, you know, the perfect example, um, they're not connecting with people. They're not telling it like it is. 
Yeah. No, no, sure. I, no idea what that company actually does. It has something to do with communications, I guess. Another headline on that same company's website read, catalytic technologies drive differentiation. Now, when I see language like that, I wonder if the writer was paid by the syllable rather than the word. Why do people write like this? I think it's for a number of reasons. One is to swagger. You know, you want to sound cool. You want to sound hip. So you use this jargon that you know because you're an insider, but a lot of other people don't, especially your audience. And, you know, I'm, I'm an audience too. I, you know, I'm a business writer, but I, I'm a consumer. And I'll tell you half the websites I go on, I don't know what the heck they're talking about, <laughs> you know, or they're dancing around their subject like Fred Astaire mm -hmm. and they don't get to the point. And um, so I just, you know, I wrote this book, Business Blather, because um, I wanted to help companies so you know, see what they're they're doing, and I give examples of of business blather, and then I I provide ways to correct that and to say it in a clearer, more concise, and high impact way. Now, this this may just me being snarky, which I have a tendency to do sometimes, but I think it resembles the problem. I wonder if the problem is that too many marketing and creative decisions today are made by MBAs who call their biggest accomplishment in life by an acronym because they probably can't spell the words out. <laughs> That may well be true. Yeah. Um, these acronyms, you know, I, I don't know about you, but I find myself looking up acronyms all the time, Googling them. Mm -hmm. And because, you know, you, you might find out what it means, but two weeks later, you completely forgot. Or um, you uh, or an acronym has more than one meaning. Uh, just ask any organization with the initials FTF. Um, so, um, but I'm constantly Googling acronyms mm -hmm. and I, I don't know if it's me, you know, um, it's, uh, it's just a way of, of communicating today, but it really loses a lot of people. It does. Well, here, here's a, here's a, here's what the book looks like. It's a business blather. Stop using words that sound good, but say nothing by Jerry McTeague. I absolutely love the uh, Blaise Pascal quote you use in the book. I would have written a shorter letter, but I didn't have the time. I think that's really the problem, isn't it? Writing is easy. Good writing is hard because it takes editing, revising, rethinking, scrapping, starting over, and so on. Why don't we take more time to write, especially for important things? Well, because we feel we don't have it. Um, you know, we're constantly checking our phones and our devices, and uh, but we really need to make the time. I always think that if you do take the time uh, to write something more concise and, and with more impact, that you know you're um, you're actually saving time because uh, there's a sort of a rush you get when you when you know you've hit something good, and and that just the, the creative energy just flows and the writing and you know you as a writer probably understand this you know um, I feel that the the lead or the first sentence of a paragraph or a page or a chapter is very important because it's like a a, a you know starting block you know mm -hmm. a, a, a track you know. You get off to a good start and then just the adrenaline starts to flow and you, you're in a groove. So um, so actually over the long term, you might even be saving time. Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, and, and also, too, if you have a lot of writing projects on the docket and you get one flowing really well and you've taken the time to kind of get in your flow, you can knock out a bunch. I mean, I have mm -hmm. a tendency to write in spurts because I know that once I get that groove going, I'm like, I'm, I'm not stopping until I'm exhausted because right. I don't want to lose it. Take now, advantage. in general, shorter is better. And your book is less than 100 pages. So you've you've aligned the ideas there. Good examples. So uh, good examples are in the book. So people see the difference between business platter and good business writing. Mm -hmm. But you also go into different writing executions. You start with LinkedIn profiles. What's the biggest problem you see with how people write their LinkedIn profiles these days? Well, maybe the biggest problem is, is uh, not how they write them, Well, which is a big problem. But the first thing that everybody sees is your profile picture. And a lot of people just don't get it. You know, they, they'll have a snapshot, you know, crudely cropped with someone's, you know, um, hands around their shoulder or a palm coming out of their head or a, a fluorescent light reflecting off their forehead. Um, LinkedIn has done a study that says a professional headshot will get you 14 times more reads and, and responses than a snapshot. So it's worth the hundred bucks, 125 bucks to get a professional headshot. It's gonna, it's gonna really help. Now, as far as writing it goes, 
um, make use of what LinkedIn gives you. They give you 220 characters for your headline. So put some keywords in there, put some sell in there. Don't just say controller of XYZ company, say controller of XYZ company, who's, you know, who's a professional at cutting taxes and, uh, mm. you know, um, saving money and, and coming up with systems and processes, whatever. Um, so make use of that. And the thing that most people kind of fall flat on is the about section. LinkedIn gives you 2,600 characters. They actually upped it up, upped it 600 characters recently. 2,600 characters to tell your story. And so tell it. A lot of people don't even use that. Or they'll just cut and paste from their resume. Yeah. Um, and um, here's a chance, you know, to, you know, it's your greatest hits. Put all the good stuff up front. I call it the Harvard effect. If mm -hmm. someone tells you right off that they went to Harvard, everything they say afterwards is going to have greater weight, right? So um, put your your accomplishments, your honors, your awards, um, articles written about you, whatever. Put it up front. Talk about them and talk and, and be. You know, LinkedIn profile is not a place to be timid or shy. Um, be boastful, because as I say to my clients, if if you don't get the job, the guy who tooted his horn probably did. So <laughs> this is a chance to get out there and really sell yourself. That's very true. I've I've tried leading with an H word too, not Harvard. I didn't go to Harvard, but I usually say I'm damn handsome and then move on from there. Doesn't do <laughs> there me quite go. as quite as bit of good as it does people who went to Harvard, but I'm working on it. Um, yes, Chip, right. Chip Griffin uh, uh, astutely observes. He says, "I love that you guys match. That was not planned. We just happened to be in yeah. Burgundy or Maroon today, whatever you want to call it." Sally Hogshead also jumping in on the show today. That's awesome for her to be here. She says, Roger, Roger that, checking out jason.online slash Julius. Well, good, Sally. I hope that you enjoy Julius as you explore that. All right, let's talk about emails, Jerry. I, actually, I may be uh, derailing the conversation a bit with this, but I found the problem with email to be layered. First, to your book's point, people write too much and aren't clear to the point. But then there's the problem for me of the reading of the email on the other end. When the communication is clear, let me give you an example. I have lost count of the times I've sent emails to people saying, I'd like to chat about the project. Can you do a call on Tuesday at 3 p.m.? And their response is, sure, what time? Or even worse, can you meet me at Starbucks on Friday at 10 a.m.? And their first response is, yeah, what time? And then the follow-up email is, where do you want to meet? So is part of the problem them and not me? Uh, absolutely. Um, people are so distracted. You could tell someone, you know, three or four times where you're supposed to meet them and they'll still say, where am I supposed to meet you? Um, I think our lives are so fractured that that's the problem that we really don't concentrate on what we're reading and, uh, and, and what we're writing. So there's, there's problems on both ends. And that makes for a lot of lost productivity, a lot of standing in front of Starbucks waiting at the wrong time you know, stuff like that. So um, you really have to concentrate. Um, you know, you can do a lot of things, but don't do them at the same time. Right. Well, I, I, it, to, to underline the rabbit hole a little bit, let me tell you about, uh, I have a couple of colleagues who will email, email me about topic one and they'll text me about topic two. Then they'll follow up on topic one via Slack then email me about topic two and they expect me to follow all this. So I wonder how the fractured mechanisms of communication also factor into the problem that we can't write where the crap these days. Yeah, I think so. I think our, our minds are so divided. Um, and, and, and as you say, with this, this email back and forth, um, try not to put too many things in an email, uh, too many points, make too many points because people don't remember. They can remember one, maybe two, three the most. So um, if, you, if you're writing about um, you know, what, what the meeting is gonna be about on Tuesday, don't start talking about what you're gonna do on Wednesday because it's gonna completely go by then. So uh, be, be judicious in, in, uh, in what you put in your, in your emails. Agreed. Ultimately, the people watching and listening to this show are, are marketers, Jerry. What are the two or three things they need to start doing today and conversely maybe stop doing today to improve their writing and thus their communication? Um, well, first of all, don't don't pad your writing. A lot of people think, well, because I'm getting paid, 
by my boss or by my audience or whomever um, that the more I write, the better I write. I mean, I mean the better it is for them, um, which is the opposite is true. People don't want to read a lot of hogwash. Um, so that's that's one thing. The other thing I think about in marketing, I, you know, the thing you read before uh, that's full of these abstract kind of concepts and words, uh, draw a picture for people. If people can't see it, they don't get it. So, you know, use words. Uh, it could be a metaphor, it could be simile, analogy, whatever, but use words that um, will draw a picture. For instance, you know, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm, I opened up to dr uh, draw them a picture in your book as you were saying that. Um, and uh, there's a bit, here's an example of business blather. Uh, we collaboratively synthesized real-time systems. And then here's Jerry McTeague's better. We merged real-time systems to create a financial data on man center. That's more descriptive. That sounds much, makes more, more sense. One more example. Uh, you can leverage our interoperable, I don't even know what that word is, interoperable action items. <laughs> That's business blather. Better is you can share our telecommunications tips worldwide. Well, that makes a lot more sense to me, especially because it uses a word I understand. Um, I, I love that illustrative. Are there any like you know, tips or tricks you could give someone in terms of when they're actually writing to stop and do that? Um, yeah, look at what you've written and read it again and, and say, is someone going to understand this? Um, did I get to the point that I use a specific item that a person can sort of imagine and, and, and think about? Um, and, and most, in most cases, if you even have to ask it, you didn't do it. So, um, <laughs> so, so do that and, 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 you know, paint those pictures in people's minds, be specific. Um, don't just talk about, you know, we have insurance, we have the bandwidth to offer you insur insurance modalities, you know, with great feature sets. No, tell them we have great group life, uh, business interruption, workers comp, medical. People want to hear, they want to get, they want to get the gist right away. They go so to your website, they have 15 seconds. Yeah. You know, you have 15 seconds because that's the average time a person spends on a website. So if you don't get your, if you delay critical information or you don't get your, your point right up front, they're gone. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. a rose is a rose is a rose. I, uh, I love mm -hmm. the entrepreneurs who pitch me their thing to talk about their software invention that they've made. That's going to change the social media world or digital marketing world. And I go to their website and I literally will, if I have to scroll below the fold, if I have to scroll at all, to understand what you do, you failed. Like, I don't know what, if I don't know what your tool is right there. And to your point, Jerry, I think it's okay to say, we sell insurance. Yeah. That way I know. <laughs> and, and you know what, uh, Jason, you can be within that, th those limitations, you can be very creative. I mean, you can, you can say what you do in a very creative way in few words um, without, uh, without having to go into a long lengthy you know, discussion. So, um, so we're not really saying just be plain and just be simple and, and all that. We're saying, you know, be concise, but be engaging too. Yeah. Uh, you've been a copywriter for a long time. You got any favorite uh, headlines, any favorite campaign slogans, any favorite uh, examples you want to throw out there for us that are really good at not being business blather? Um, well, I, I wrote this ad um, for swing line staplers that shows a picture, a big picture of a paper clip. And it says our only real competition, and that won all sorts of awards, and uh, was in the, it was quoted in the book "100 Greatest Corporate Ads." So, there's one. Uh, another one, which isn't mine, uh, by the way, but I, it's been stuck in my memory for many, many years. Is uh, there's an ad with a bottle, of Chivas Regal Scotch shattered on the ground, and the headline says, "Did you ever see a grown man cry?" <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, there, there are, there are some that, and then there was another one that always stuck in my mind. There's a, a bowl of, uh, steaming, you know, full looking bowl of clam chowder, steaming clam chowder. And the headline says to a clam, it's like making the Super Bowl. <laughs> you know, it's, it's analogies like that, that really stick in people's mind. Yeah. And. So, um, so you don't have to be verbose. 
uh, to be creative, um, just spend a little more time. And if you're happy with what you do, it's, it's, worth, it's worth the time and the effort. Very good. Jerry, where can people find you online and where can people find the book? Well, I'm at uh, jerrymctigue.com. Um, that's simple enough. Uh, the book is available on online or can be ordered on online bookstores and physical bookstores everywhere. Um, there's a Kindle edition on Amazon as well as a paperback. So um, so pretty much just, just search Business Blather. And it'll pop up. <laughs> well, to, to make it easier on everybody, I've, I've dropped the link to your website, your LinkedIn profile, and to the Amazon book page uh, in the comments section. I'll make sure those links are obviously in the show notes uh, as well. Jerry, thank, thank you, you so much for joining me today. We really appreciate the insights and keep fighting the good fight, man. I, we appreciate the work you're doing. Great. Thank you, Jason. I really enjoyed it. All right. Jerry McTighe here on the show. Great to have him and uh, ha have him be uh, a part of the program and give us some good advice. Business Blather is the book. Here's what it looks like again. And again, this is going to be a nice, easy read for you. It's less than 100 pages. He kept it concise and, and, and tight, which is good. Um, and uh, I read, you know, basically in under an hour, which I never read anything in under an hour because I get distracted, but very good, good advice. Great examples in here too. He does a really good job of what, you know, kind of I read to you. Here's an example of business blather. And then here's an example of, you know, it, it improved. So get your copy of this book. Good stuff. And uh, Izzy uh, House also says good stuff. So believe her because she's, she's, she's good at, at observing things like that. Um, okay. Uh, I am still hoping, uh, speaking of books, by the way, I'm still hoping all of you will get a copy of my new book, Winfluence. It's available in bookstores everywhere on Amazon and all the other online retailers too. It's available in paperback on Kindle and now via audiobook. I've got a cool graphic for that. Um, so you can, uh, you Audible fans can listen to yours truly narrate the book. Uh, the audiobook can be found at jason.online slash audiobook. That takes you to Audible to get it. Um, and, um, if you want the Kindle or the Amazon, uh, version of it, uh, you can also go to, uh, jason.online slash get the book. But if you want a 20% discount on the paperback version, you can go to jason.online slash buy influence and the code falls 20 gets you 20% off. So check that out as well. Uh, Chip Griffin jumps in and says that was a good blather free uh, discussion. I appreciate that, Chip, coming from you. I'll take the, the compliment any day of the week. Um, and uh, Izzy gives us a smiley face. Again, if you're uh, listening in on the comments or on the show today and you're on the LinkedIn's or the YouTube's or the uh, Facebook's or the Twitter's with us live, jump in and say hello, ask a question if you have it, all that good stuff. Uh, I do want to go over a couple of other things to uh, today here before we go, though. So speaking of influencer marketing, um, a marketing consultant friend emailed me the other day asking for some advice on dealing with a client who was resistant to influencer marketing. They reported to him that they had tried it before and didn't really see much return. His take seemed to be that they would paid an influencer or two to post about their product on the respective social channels and did not see a lift in sales. That's understandable. It's fairly common. He asked how I would counsel that client to perhaps get them to give influence marketing another chance. So here's some of what I wrote back. I wrote, the first thing I would counsel them on is to stop thinking of influencer marketing in terms of renting someone's audience and start thinking of it in terms of hiring a creative freelancer who creates content or assets for you. And they happen to have an audience you want to reach as well. You're not just renting someone's followers, you're tapping into writers, photographers, videographers, designers, comedians, directors who know how to create content and engage audiences on social media channels. The assumption is the brand is perhaps lacking in that regard or they wouldn't be looking for someone to help engage those audiences. When an influential Instagrammer or YouTuber creates amazing content with or about your brand in an influencer partnership, you can and should negotiate to use that content on your social channels, the content to your audiences, and even put paid spend behind that really good content so that it can go a lot further than just the influencer's followers. The hardest part of influencer marketing is choosing the right influencers. For most companies uh, that start out trying it, that's the biggest mistake they make. They choose the wrong influencer or influencers. They see poor results and then they give up. The second mistake I see from new brands is they pick influencers who are great at creating awareness. Then they try to measure that in terms of sales. And that might be what happened here. 
If your goal is to make chocolate pudding, you should not be disappointed if the steak is undercooked. Depending upon the brand, you're right in counseling them that impact with influencer marketing takes time. If you sell a $2 lipstick and you give a mega influencer a 50% discount code for people to order it on your website, you can probably drive a few hundred or, or a few thousand SKUs sold. But if you sell something that has a longer consideration time, isn't available with an instant e-commerce purchase, et cetera. You need both reach and frequency to drive conversions. The best influencer campaigns are longer term relationships built over time where the audience is introduced to, to trusting the brand, not just seeing a product they can purchase if they're in the middle of the mode to convert at that time. So those are some ideas to help him. Hopefully you potentially counsel higher ups in your organization or perhaps clients who are hesitant. I'd be happy to offer up thoughts on further questions you might have in that topic area too. Email me at Jason at jasonfalls.com. I might just use that question here on the show. Uh, finally, today marks the first day of the big three day event for influencer marketing learning called the influencer marketing show. That's the biggest influencer marketing event on the planet presented by the folks at TalkingInfluence.com, which is kind of the industry Bible out of the United Kingdom. I will be the host of tomorrow's festivities. My pal Scott Guthrie is handling today's sessions and Jennifer Quigley Jones from Digital Voices hosts on Thursday. If you sign up now, you can still see tomorrow and Thursday's content live and all of it, including what you might miss today, will be available on demand. Tomorrow, there are some great sessions planned on influencer marketing trends for 2021, bringing inclusivity and diversity to influencer marketing efforts, a deep discussion about the idea of authenticity and what it really means. Then there's a session specific to Pinterest and other user-generated content for brands. Join me first thing in the morning and I'll usher you through the day of great learning and discussion. Get smarter about influencer marketing. You can go to influencermarketingshow.com slash global to register. Over 2,000 people attended this event last year. It's also virtual, so you don't have to leave your desk to learn much and see great examples of influence marketing to inspire you. That's influencermarketingshow.com slash global. Join me for that tomorrow, won't you? I hope you do. Uh, if you are watching or listening to the show, not during our 11 a.m. Eastern time hour on Tuesday, you've not joined us live. Remember, we broadcast this podcast with a live stream. To join us live, just follow me or Cornette on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter, or look for Digging Deeper on YouTube, and you'll get that handy live notification when we stream. That's normally at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific on Tuesday mornings. Look for me online at Jason Falls and find Cornette online at Team Cornette. Uh, the Digging Deeper YouTube channel, by the way, uh, is at cornet.online slash dig deep. So if you just want to make sure that you get a subscription to that channel, you'll see the video recordings of our streams here every week whenever you log into YouTube and go watch your videos so you can catch the show there. Also, if you uh, prefer the audio version of the show, you can go to cornet.online slash digging deeper and subscribe to the audio podcast wherever you get your podcasts. We have links at that URL. Uh, cornet.online slash digging deeper. We have links there to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Pandora, and more. You can find those links there, cornet.online slash digging deeper. Next week on the show, ladies and gentlemen, the CEO of Stuckey's will be here. Stephanie Stuckey, uh, her family sold off the brand name <clears throat> years ago, but she bought it back well, I got, I got, I'm so choked up that Stephanie's coming next week. But the uh, family sold off brand name years ago. She bought it back and is reinventing the popular roadside traveler Haven brand. Super excited to dive into that brand and her vision for it. We'll talk about all the creative things she's got going. That will be live on the interwebs on Tuesday, April 20th at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. If you can't be there live, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Again, that is at cornet.online slash dig deep and watch the replay on demand. Or you can subscribe to the audio version, of course, at cornet.online slash digging deeper. And here comes the part of the program everyone's been waiting for when Jason has to do three things at once and often messes it up. So I got to hit a button here and I got to hit a button here and hopefully this will work. That will do it for this edition of Digging Deeper, Make Creativity Your Business Advantage. If you like the show, Please share it with a friend or a colleague who might as well. Digging Deeper is a production of the Cornet Group. Find us online at teamcornet.com. Our executive producer is Christy Heiler. Creative director is Jason Pajeski. Associate producer is Ashley Harris. Our theme music is composed by Rex Banner. 
I'm your host, Jason Falls. Thanks for joining us, folks. Until next time, I'll see you on the interwebs.